Welcome, Drink with James, <laughs> episode 102. Sorry, I was, I was just like getting the, I was getting the energy of the room. I was, I was, I was, I was bringing it in. Um, Drink with James, episode 102. Welcome. We're here. It's summer in New York. Polo Classic's over. There's nothing to look forward to anymore. We've already had my birthday. We've already had the Polo Classic. The only thing left to look forward to is, uh, I think I have a NetJets trip, end of July. I guess that should be decent. Um, I'm going to Italy with my family in August. That should be okay. Uh, and then Christmas. Everything else is, is meaningless. So, um, you know, the Polo Classic has, has a hangover, an actual physical hangover, and then the hangover of realizing you have to wait a year to go again. Um, cheers again to the Love Clico team and LaForce uh, for putting on uh, just a consistently incredible event. Uh, if you all haven't been, you should try and come. If you're not in New York, you should try and come up for it. Again, watch Sydney's video. She talks all about it. Um, it's such a fun day. It delivers on the hype. It's fantastic. That's all I have to say about that. Um, it also means it's summer in New York. It's getting hotter. Tim has to turn the AC off in this room when we're filming, so as we film and I get drunker, I also get hotter and hotter. By the time this thing's over, I'm drenched in sweat. Uh, but we do it for you, um, so that's also something that's going on. Um, what else did I want to say? I had something. Oh, I'm going to LA tomorrow, so we're going to LA for a conference. Do I like LA? I do. As a New Yorker, I like to visit LA. I, I could never live there. Um, I feel like uh, there is, what do I want to say about LA? What do I want to say about LA? Mm. I feel like it would be hard in LA for somebody that really wants to work hard. I think if you want to have like a nice lifestyle and you want to have like work-life balance, LA is an awesome place to live. If you don't, if you just want to work really hard, it's not a great place to be. Uh, I also don't think it's a good place to drink. It's, a, it's not a great drinking town. Go out to a bar on a Wednesday night at 10 p.m. and it's empty. Um, so I would struggle in general, but I do enjoy visiting. It's gonna be lovely weather. I get to see my little brother. We're out there for a conference. Um, if you're in LA, I probably won't see you, but if you see me on the street, wave. But you saw this video after I'm already back, so actually. So we, we went to an event last night for uh, David Coggins. It has a new book that he's promoting called Men and Manners. Um, very well-dressed room. The, the dudes in the room looked awesome. Uh, gay men, straight women, you should just follow this tour around if you're single and on the prowl and just like, that's a good place to go shopping, I think. Um, look, I'm, you know, I'm a, sh a straight man, but I, I appreciate a good looking, well-dressed dude as much as the next guy. Um, and that room looked great last night. Um, he's great. Um, you know, the book is, is very much about, uh, I believe, you know, it's, it's, it's just giving advice to younger people on just like how to be an adult. Um, and I think, what did I learn? I learned a few things. I put something on my Instagram today, but also I think it's just such a case for being, uh, you know, having a viewpoint and sticking to it. Like he has a viewpoint that uh, not everyone agrees with. He has a, a, a way of living that maybe not everyone agrees with, but it's very much him and he's just like, gotten in that lane and that is where he lives and operates. Um, you know, I was, I was talking to my girlfriend about it and she was like, oh, is he like Nick Wooster? Cause I was like, oh, he's an older well-dressed guy. I was like, no, cause like Nick Wooster used to wear suits and now wears streetwear, which is really confusing. Um, but Nick Wooster is much more of like a fashion person. He is, he has changed with the trends. Whereas like David Coggins has a look and it's just like, he's just, I think probably gone deeper and deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole of that aesthetic and that look and that lifestyle and the person he wants to be and crafting that. And really the book is just a peek inside of what his viewpoint of the world is, which is what your Instagram account should be or your blog should be or your YouTube should be. It should be no different. You should have a unique viewpoint of the world and you should be able to um, 
you should be able to communicate that clearly in a way that is entertaining and interesting and takes people along for the ride as well. I think that like what's interesting about traditional suiting and menswear is it it's very education based. You have to learn things. There's certain rules um, and the rules are loose, but there are rules um, and maybe a good, you know, a good exercise for y'all as you're as you're working on defining your worldview and who you are and, and by extension who what your channel is what is your your brand is like write 20 rules write 20 things that that you should or you should not do you know his examples is things like you know tipping well he thinks that men should you know and by extension people but he's speaking to men Specifically, men should tip well. He just thinks that's something that you should do. He thinks that you should, you know, wear a sport coat when you're on a plane. You know, these are, for him, these are rules that he lives by. I encourage all of you maybe to write 20 rules of, of life, like your lifestyle, how you treat people, how you dress, how you interact with the world, how you think about things. It might help you to define what your viewpoint is. If you don't have 20 things that you feel like you're passionate about that are guiding principles in your life, I think it would be hard to, to like have a, you probably don't have a point of view. I think you probably have a hard time building a following. So try that. If you come up with 20, send them to me. I'll read them. Jamesof4.co. Question number one, what are four's thoughts on Instagram takeovers? Um, I haven't thought about Instagram takeovers in a while. I feel like they had their moment. They're very popular. Um, I feel like they're not as popular. That said, I like story takeovers. I think they're an interesting way to, uh, you know, take your audience and maybe pull them into a brand's feed. Um, it's a way for you to maybe tell a more direct product story. Um, then you would feel comfortable telling on your feed specifically. Um, I think takeovers can be a nice upsell as well. If you're negotiating with a brand, you want to try and get a little bit more, you can say, hey, I could take over your, your Instagram for a day. I could do you know, five stories. I could do one static post. Um, it's a nice way to cross-pollinate followers with that brand's audience as well. Obviously, it's going to be more difficult to get Glossier to let you do a takeover uh, because they have a massive rabid following and so there's a huge value in you being on their feed probably in a lot of ways more so than them being on your feed uh, but a smaller brand uh, a more emerging brand uh, even a big mass market brand that doesn't have a huge following that's just trying to build it up it's a nice way for you to uh, flesh out the deal a little bit maybe get a little bit more money and potentially uh, pull a new audience in to your feed but also a nice way to try and get your audience to, to follow this brand. Again, we, we, we talk about how you need to be thinking about how you can, can create success for these brands. You need to think about ways that, that they leave the collaboration and say, oh, that was, that was really great. They did that takeover, we loved it. Also, we had 100 new followers from her or him and that was, that was great. So, um, worth thinking about, worth doing, if you have something interesting to say. Question number two is someone saying, my organic posts do really well, um, sponsored posts don't do that well, and they feel really bad um, because they want their sponsored posts to do well, they want the brand to feel good about it, but the engagement falls out from under them when they do a sponsored post. What can we do? How can we get the same engagement? Great question. I think every one of you should try and you know, look on your four profiles, benchmark your engagement. You should try and beat your benchmark engagement on every sponsored post you do. Your goal should be that the post that you got paid a bunch of money to do or some money to do or no money to do but they gave you product, that post should do better than your normal, here's my, you know, I see, what's it called? I, I, I like just had a brain fart and wanted to say your Asiago bowl, which would be a lot more delicious than acai because I've had an acai bowl and it's fucking garbage. Why am I eating a smoothie with a spoon? That is my question for acai. Why 
Am I eating a fucking smoothie with a spoon? I would rather just get a straw and drink it and then eat the fruit after. Um, I'm, where was I? Where was I? I was somewhere. Um, so, your sponsor post should do better than your organic post. That should be your goal. How do you get there? Well, one, I think you do need to train your audience. If you're, if you're growing and you're starting to incorporate sponsored posts, I would have a conversation with your audience about starting to do that. Really excited to start to bring brand partners in. Um, people have been with you for years. Hopefully you're having conversations with your audience. Hopefully they feel like they've been part of your journey. They should be excited that you're getting sponsored deals. They should be excited that you're successful. A lot of people, I find a lot of people feel like when an influencer they follow starts to get sponsored deals that they feel like they were part of that success. If you're genuine and authentic, I think you can engender that feeling of like, oh yeah, like you go, like you're getting that money. That's awesome. Like we're getting access to different brands. Like we're, this feed should be getting better and better and better and better and better. Um, I think if you haven't done a good job building that relationship, there can be the, the backlash. There can be people being like, oh, now they're, now they're doing everything sponsored. There's that. Two is if you feel like you're not getting good engagement, maybe dial back the number of sponsored posts that you're doing. I think 25%, this is just, I'm just totally making this up essentially. I don't have any data to support this right now. I think 25% is, is kind of a, a high end of where you should be at for percentage of your feed that's sponsored. Um, there are, there are exceptions to that. I think beauty influencers can do more just because people, beauty naturally, like you work across so many different brands and, and, and when you're buying beauty products, certainly sometimes you are, you're brand loyal, but you're willing to hear about anything that's good. It, it is more about the value of a single product than your devotion to a brand or a line, I, I feel like. Um, so I, beauty influencers can do more. They can do, I think, like 40% sometimes. Uh, there are times when your feed might be more sponsored, a Coachella, a fashion week, things like that. That is understandable. You can get away with that for a while. But if you're not getting the engagement that you want, it may be that you just are doing way too many sponsored posts. It may be that you're picking the wrong sponsored posts and you're not doing stuff that's organic to your brand. That's, that's your audience saying, we don't like this or you just haven't gotten good at incorporating that. Um, you know, it is a skill to be able to advertise for a brand. Just because you built a following doesn't necessarily mean that you're great at telling a branded, sponsored story. Um, so watch the influencers that you really respect and you like. Look at the ads that are sponsored that you still think, oh, I, that's interesting, I'll check that out. And ask yourself, why did I think that? Why did I connect with this post even though it was sponsored. Learn from those people. Try and emulate them. Read about advertising. Read about psychology. Read about sales. Try and educate yourself on that. There is, there is a whole world out there that influencers are ignoring of just like how do you sell things to people. That's your job. Your job is, is selling things to people. Um, if you don't educate yourself on how to do that uh, through a advertising medium, through copy and images and video, then I think you'll have a hard time being successful. So try and read up on that stuff. Watch the percentage of posts that you do. Try and get better. Make sure the brands are aligned and they're authentic. And you can always kind of hit reset. Oh, and the other one is talk to your audience about it. Tell them why you're doing it. Tell them, you know, ask them the kinds of posts that they would want to see. This is, this is a, you're not speaking into the void. You're not like screaming into the void. This is an audience that can speak back to you. Ask them, hey, I've noticed that engagement isn't as good on my sponsored posts as I'd like it to be. Why is that? Why aren't you all engaging with it? Do you feel like it's inauthentic? I'm trying to do this as a living. I'm trying to make a living. I'm trying to do this and this. Like, I want this to work. I want you all to be connecting with this stuff. You're not. Why? You know, I mean, that's probably the simplest answer is just ask your audience what's going on. Um, get some feedback. Um, and then react to that feedback and try and change things and track it. 
and say, oh, okay, I, I, I changed two or three things and this, this post did 10% better. Even if that's another 100 likes and you don't think about it as a big deal, that is a big deal. If you can do 10% better every time, you know, 20 sponsored posts down the road, you're going to be in a really good position. Um, so. What do you say when brand, so let's say a post like that happens, you sponsor posts lower than your average, brand calls you out on it. How do you, uh, what do you do in that situation? I think if you have a severely underperforming post, it probably behooves you to do another one um, and tell them you want to try again. I wouldn't take the first one down, um, but I would say, you know what? I feel like we did, I didn't do as good a job as I should have. This didn't perform in the way I'd like, and I would like to make it up to you. I would, I would say that to the brand before they ask um, and say that, that you would like to make it up to you, do you and ask them, you know, do you want me to focus on this product again? Do you want me to do something else? Is there anything else I can help you with? I want to, to make this right for you. Um, that would go a, a long way. Uh, we had a, a similar a situation with uh, a client of ours um, where we felt like we were just, you know, a little slower to respond to them as we would like. Very, like we're very busy right now. People are, are tapped out. Everyone's working to the absolute maximum. And, and, you know, there was this one client that we really care about and they, they didn't get the, maybe the level of attention that we wanted to them to over a couple of days time. Um, and so we reached out and said, hey, that's, you know that's not us. We're sorry. You deserve better than that. Here are the things that we're doing to make sure that like you're getting the level of service that you've come to expect from us. Getting ahead of problems is a great way to uh, to kind of build trust between you and that client uh, because they feel like you guys are you're on the same team, which you are, and you want to do a good job. So that's how I would handle it. Question number three is: What are some strategies I'd recommend? for someone who has great content but a small audience. So I preface it by saying my, assum my, my assumption in answering this question is that you want to have a larger audience. It is 100% okay to have awesome content and not have a big audience. There's, abs there's nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with not being super focused on growth and trying to grow your Instagram and get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Sometimes the value in having an account is just publishing and, and having an audience, no matter how big or small, that connects with it and finds some value in it. And that is totally fine. That is the way I treat my Instagram. I enjoy it. I don't stress about it too much. I don't really care. Would I like 50,000 followers? Sure. Like, I, I'd take them. Am I going to like put the work in to actually get that? There's absolutely no way I'm going to do that. So that's okay. Um, now, if you're watching this show, that's probably not your mindset. So how do you, you know, what do you do? Great content, small audience. Uh, you know, the, f the first thing I would say again is like, is pers get perspective, understand the long game, you know, understand that if you, if you talk to most influencers who are successful, uh, and are at, you know, 150, 200, 300 K. They've been doing it for at least five to seven years. So that's point number one. If you're two years in and you're at 15K and you're frustrated, you, you haven't even started. You're just getting going. So one is, is, is focus on the long game. If people come to me all the time and say, I, I want to be a full-time influencer. I want to be an influencer full-time. So what you're saying to me is you want your career to be an influencer. And you think about a career, most people, is, is 40 years. Okay, so you're frustrated that in the first three years, which is, you know, some, what, 7% of your career, you aren't exactly where you want to be. Um, you don't have all the success that you want. That's, that's crazy. You know, that's not how the world works. Some people get lucky. Some people start an Instagram account and go 400,000 followers in a year, but even people like Tezza, who right now is gaining, we talk about all the time, is gaining 60,000 followers a month right now. She's fucking absolutely killing it. She's been doing this for, for well over five years. And like, she posted this whole thing recently of all of her old photos, and it was interesting to see her transition and to see her get better and better and better and to hone her craft. But this is a long game. So 
If you have great content and you're happy with it and you have a small following, I say keep pushing. Um, there are best practice things that you can do to try and get your stuff in front of other people. I think that I am, I am not as good of a person to go to as some others. I think there's a lot of places that have listicles of 10 ways to grow your Instagram following and 10 strategies you can use tomorrow to grow your Instagram. I'm not really interested in that because again, I think about this as a career. I think about this as, as long-term work. And I think that end of the day, talented people that work hard are generally after some period of time, find some sort of success. Um, and, and I think the world has a way of, of kind of like pushing the cream to the, to the top. Uh, and I think it, it takes an unbelievable amount of work and hustle and, and all of those things that are important. You can't just sit back and say, well, my content's good. Someday someone will find me. But I think that a lot of it is just time. It's just putting time in. Now, if you say, well, I'm seven years in and I have 5,000 followers and I don't know what I'm doing wrong, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know how to answer that question. People come and ask it all the time. I don't, I don't know what to say because I think you probably have to change things up if you want to grow your following. Uh, unless you feel like, well, I'm so on the cutting edge that like the world will change and when it does, I will be there ready for it. Um, but if you're doing similar things to other people but it's not working and it hasn't been working for years, I think you need to change it. Um, I don't know what you're doing to say what is or isn't working. Um, and I will say again that not everybody in the world is, is owed success in, in the place that they want to be successful. Um, and and that's, just a, that's just a fact of the world. You know, you, you could have amazing content um, and it's just not the right time. I, you know, the, the, it's, 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 a, it's a tough thing. And I think that that's where like, the pushing comes and if you just love something then you you probably would never think of quitting anyway so it doesn't you know this this pep talk doesn't matter um i do think that there are times in, in every entrepreneur creatives path where they think about quitting where they think that like this isn't worth it when they think that it's not going to work um but there are times when if the world is telling you over and over and over and over and over again it's not working, that like you have to tweak things a little bit. You have to change your, change your approach a little bit. Um, but again, a lot of it is just keeping in the game, keep doing it, stay consistent, um, keep learning, keep evolving, grow your craft, get better at things, learn new skills, incorporate those things, talk to people, get out there, meet people, travel to new places, try new shit, tell new stories, try and be different, like hone your worldview, do all of those things, and maybe you wake up one day and you're successful. That'd be great. Anyway, that's episode 102. Thank you for joining. We'll be here next week. Send your questions in. We always need them. Cheers.